If you want to master your motorcycle, if you want to be really smooth and really good, this is the lesson you've been waiting for. Let's talk about a very important fundamental skill for every rider, whether you're an expert or you're a beginner, and that's your hand position. It turns out it's a keystone of riding well. If your hand position is wrong on the motorcycle, everything else is gonna go wrong. Your body position will be off, your tension is off. This is gonna make a mess of things. The, the gloves that you purchase, if they're good quality glove, They'll kind of give you a clue to what this position should be. I'm wearing a set of the Revit Sand 4s, and when you look at these gloves, what you'll notice is on the inside, it's got a reinforcement on the inside edge here, and all the way back here at the pad. Turns out that's a clue. The bar should run diagonal across your palm. Most riders are gonna sit down on the road and just grab a hold of the handlebars. And most of your road bikes and your adventure bikes, the handlebars are set up for road riding. Which means when I sit down on the bike and I reach out and I grab it, it puts my hands into a natural resting position. But on a, an adventure bike or going off road, we sit up very close to the tank, we pull our bodies forward and our hand position changes. And that's the position we're looking at is from here across to here. So we run diagonal as opposed to being across the knuckles. So this is not how we grab the handlebars. We end up grabbing it like this. Think of it very much like if you were to play racquetball or to open a door. When you open up a door, you reach out and you rotate your hand. When you grab a racquetball, you grab it and then you swing it. That's the same grip that we're talking about where you allow that rotation. And there's several benefits to this. I'll start off with one that a lot of riders struggle with. And that's when they go off road, they end up revving and they're all over the place. And they're like, how do I smooth this out? And there's a lot of different trips and or tricks and techniques to smooth that out. But the very first one we should consider is what's my grip? If I'm directly across at the knuckles, every time I move that handlebar is gonna continue to shift up and down. If I rotate it out to the side, then I can move, but I end up with less movement and less rotation. How extreme you have to rotate your grip on your handlebars is gonna be determined by two primary factors. The first is gonna be how well your motorcycle is optimized for off-road riding. A street motorcycle, uh, an adventure bike, is gonna have handlebars that bow back towards the rider and often down. That means it's a very natural position riding on the pavement, the elbows in, the rider's comfortable. But if you go off-road, you have to stand up on the motorcycle, you move forward on the motorcycle, that grip has to rotate out. One of the solutions a lot of riders do, and this isn't necessarily wrong, is take the, the stock handlebars and rotate them forward. The problem is at some point, these outer tips on the bars are gonna end up higher than the inner portion of the bar. They create a V. It ends up opposite of what the, the natural position is for the motorcycle. And although they work okay off-road, they're very inefficient on road. That's a good indication it's time to change your handlebars. The second thing that's really gonna play factor on this is how extreme you are off road. If I'm just standing up and cruising along on a gravel road, I may be standing up high enough to be almost square across the knuckles. But the muddier it gets, the looser the, the gravel is, the deeper the sand is, the faster I ride, the more I have to move forward on this motorcycle. And as I ride forward, my arms, because I want to keep my wrist straight, my arms end up rotating and I end up more extreme across the grip. The other part of this is when you look at your grip and this 
extra padded leather here on the inside, this area here, it, it kind of flexes. There's some meat and muscle there on the hand and that works as kind of a buffer. As the ground gets rougher and bounces around, that meat and that muscle allows some flex in there and smooths out the throttle when things get kind of rough. The other thing that makes that throttle really rough has to do with the fact that we grab the handlebars. And that again puts us back into that across the knuckle pattern as opposed to diagonal. Turns out your fingers have different jobs. If you were taught in a class that you should be using all four fingers on the clutch and all four fingers on the brake, I'm gonna tell you stop that now. It's not helping you out, it's just gonna make things really messy. That outside finger, that pinky finger that you have is meant to connect you to the handlebar. It's a hook. It doesn't wrap around and hold the handlebars. We should never be gripping the handlebars. We should be nice and relaxed. Our fingers should be dangling over the top. And that outside pinky just kind of curls around the grip and allows me to have a hook. This is so that if I hit something, if I catch a rut, if I bounce off a rock and that handlebar gets quickly snapped out of my hand, it doesn't actually get snapped out of my hand. What happens is it starts to pull, but that pinky, which is in position, pulls my hand and my arm with it, so I'm still connected to the motorcycle. The bike will self-correct. I just still want to be connected to it. And that's what that pinky does. These other three fingers are for the controls. That's for your brake, and that's for your clutch. Use one to three fingers, depending on how much strength you have, how long the levers are, how fatigued you are, that's gonna change based on every single ride. But these three fingers here are for brake and clutch. This outside finger is only to attach you to the motorcycle. So that kind of gives you an idea of how we start. That's not going to remain constant. Like so many things, motorcycling, especially off-road and adventure riding, the answer is that depends. When somebody says, should I always grip it like this? Should I always wear it? It doesn't matter what the question is, the answer is it, that depends. What happens is this grip that I'm referring to that runs from the outside across assumes that I'm still in a position up and above the motorcycle. If I move left or I move right, then that grip is gonna change. So as I rotate, my hands will also rotate on that grip. If I move to the right farther, then this grip is gonna rotate farther across my hand. But that also means as I move to the right on this hand, I'm gonna end up moving the other direction. So I go deeper into the palm and I run across the pinky over here. That flexibility, that ability to sit on top of the bars, on top of the grip, and float left or right is what allows my, me to maintain body posture. Remember I told you, if your grip is wrong, your posture is wrong. And that's because this is how we get into that position and up and controlled. You'll notice the elbows kind of sit a little bit higher. If you've ever taken a motorcycle class or read something, they say, get your elbows up, rub elbows. That's wrong. Okay, your elbows will be up if everything's right. But just putting your elbows up doesn't make it right. Have you ever asked why are my elbows up? This is why. When I take my grip and I rotate that grip out, my elbows come higher in the air. When I rotate left or right on the motorcycle, now my elbows, because my, my wrist is flat and my grip is correct, my elbows are up. And now when I shift left or right on the motorcycle, I have space to move. This is Im Im really important if we're doing slow speed maneuvers, if we want to do counterbalancing or we're maneuvering around this. It also works if you're riding and something suddenly slips or moves underneath you, if you drop into a rut, if you catch a rock, if, you're, if your front end slides in mud, you need to be able to allow that to move. If you naturally drop into a street rider's position where you lock the grip on and your elbows come in on the side, then those will end up pushing you in. Also, it pulls your body into the motorcycle. If my wrist is correct, if my grip is correct, that pulls me out and the bike can move underneath me freely. If I'm gripped in tight and I'm across the knuckles, when my elbow comes in, it also pulls my body in and now I'm out of position. It all starts with the small stuff. And often we, we forget and miss these details. When I do my training, 
here in the States. When I take people over to, by the way, I'll be over in South Africa doing a class this year too, but when I'm doing classes in South Africa, when I'm doing classes in, in the United States, whether I'm doing a training tour in Nepal or this May uh, in South Africa, feel free to join me, it's on brettax.com. But when I do these different training things, I'm always looking at those fine details and I don't do a level two. You'll notice I only do one level of training. If you look at my website, you'll see I just train adventure riders. I don't have a level two, a level three, a level five, because what I found out is I teach all my riders the same information, but to different levels of detail, understanding, and proficiency. It's these details of riding, this grip correction, that makes you a masterful rider as opposed to a beginner. And that's often what we forget. And the older we get, the more these details matter. When we're young, we like to tear through things and we figure it all out. Right? We, we fall down on the ground, we pick ourselves up and we go, okay, that was fun, let's go try again. As we get older, we get smarter, we start realizing that the details matter. These, these fine motor controls are what make us really good at riding. So in review, remember, it's all in the grip. Take your hands, make sure you rotate them out, use your outside pinkies to hook your handlebars, use the other fingers to, to maintain control of the brake and the throttle, make sure your wrist is always flat so that you're in a good position and move up and forward on the motorcycle. I've done a couple of videos on posture, make sure you check those out if you haven't seen them already. Check me out if you want to go to South Africa or if you want to do a class with me in South Africa, it's on brettax.com. This year's classes in the States are pretty much full, uh, but you can always check them out or jump on the list for 2023. Thanks for watching the channel. Thanks for supporting the channel, especially all you on Patreon. Thanks. Until next time, remember, it's attitude that makes the difference. Attitude matters. So, smile on your ride even when you're terrified.